Hi, everybody, and thanks for joining Martha and me. The demo you're about to see by my mentor, Robert E. Wood, was a real eye-opener game changer. Let me show you what I mean. I was so frustrated when I first began painting. I wanted my paintings to be loose, and I went down the page to start with, and they started out very loose, but... The more I painted, the tighter and the tighter and the tighter the painting would get. And it kind of, I didn't know what I was, I knew I was doing something wrong, but I didn't know why. And so I took a workshop from Robert E. Wood. I mentioned him, I try to all the time, great <laughs> teacher, painter. This was a figure class. And this was a full sheet figure demo he was going to do. And, uh, he was just doing a demo to show people, you know, his procedure. It, it what didn't have anything to do with softening edges. But Bob's <laughs> paintings were so wonderfully in and out of focus. He would tighten it up in the important places, and then it would just kind of melt away in a very lost and found kind of. And I love that. I love that. But I could not emulate it. I could. I didn't know what I was doing wrong. And so he was going to do this demo. Beautiful drawing on the page. And he started on a, I just knew he was going to wet that page down and start doing those wet into wet things. And he started uh, on a dry piece of paper with a pointed brush, just about like a 10, just a, on a full sheet now. And I thought, man, that's not right. <laughs> And he came in, the first thing he did, he came in and painted an eyeball. And he came, it just cut out and, and uh, just as hard edged as it could be. But he didn't go any farther than that before he stuck his brush into the water and he came out away from and he just softened it. Just nibble away. And he'd come in and just blend this just a little bit. Just a little bit. Wow. And then he came over and he painted the other eyeball. Just as hard edge and cut out. But he stopped right there. He stuck his brush in, got the pig water out, and he came and he softened this. And he just nibble at. And he just take this away a little bit. And then he come in. Let me get that a bit better. And he's talking to the class, and he's not in a hurry. And and he come in and, and find a. One little shape, one little shape. Huh? And he wouldn't go any farther than that before oh, I got that shape a little off to the side. And he just might no more than that. And then come out, get it wet, go to soften the edge, just tickling. And I begin, as I was watching him, I thought, there it is. Huh? He's not doing something I don't know how to do, but he's doing it throughout the painting, from the beginning of the painting to the end. He paints a shape in, build the form. He changed color more than I'm doing now. But before he left the shape, he would come in, soften it up a little. He would come in and just tickle just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it never got tight. I painted the shape, adjusted the color and value, and would go on to the next shape. So... My paintings, the more I painted, the tighter and the tighter they became. But he 
had one more step, one more procedural step than I did. Mm -hmm. He painted the shape, adjusted the color and value, and then he came in and softened the edge. He would soften the edge uh, and diffuse the edge. Mm -hmm and let it blend on the page. It was just wonderfully eye-opening and it was one of those uh, learning experiences that, uh, you know, that you'll always remember because it, it that one little demo kind of changed my my whole thinking process of finding shapes and then coming out and getting wet and letting that go through there. Where it's less important, he would lose it more. Where it was more important, he'd have it more found. Also, uh, this I want y'all to try this exercise uh, when you have time with any subject. It doesn't have to be a figure. This was a figure class. He told the class, he set up the models. Uh, he said, okay, 20 minutes, everybody get the drawing of the model on the page. So we did. Gave the girls a little break. They got back up on the podium. And he said, all right, everybody. For the next three minutes, I want you to start finding her. And so we... And again, okay, there's her head, there's her eyes, there, her shoulder. We're finding edges and shapes. And he'd say, okay, everybody, for the next two minutes, I want you to start losing her a little bit. And so we come in and we paint through and let that be lost and we come in and lose. Uh, and where it was less important, we might get more and more and more lost. Losing. And then he said, okay, everybody, for the next three minutes, start finding her again. So we come in and we start finding her, uh, building up shape, finding more objects. And we go back and forth. Okay, everybody, now lose her. If we lose. And, and right in front of me, my painting was getting more and more and more in focus, more and more out of focus more and more in focus, uh, it was altering and changing right in front of me. The lady on my left, she liked it a little more found than I did. The lady on my right liked it a little more lost than I did. Everybody has a different idea of, is that too lost or too found? It's not a one size fits all, but, uh, with the changes in colors and values, it is that, that kind of works nicely there. I want to have it a little darker here, a little stronger in here. Uh, maybe hint at the shape a little bit, but this is, is it's totally an experiment. It, uh, but boy, it really teaches you uh, how we can uh, soften, adjust. Uh, I mean, y'all can't see, but if we, if you watch me paint, I always have paper towels all around, and I, uh, these are my tools: brush in the left hand and the paper towel. So I'm constantly adjusting the amount of paint, the amount of water, uh, 
that kind of thing is is uh, is something that it's a habit, and and I really just like Gary, I learned that just by observing, uh, and then he he would give us exercises as well. But boy, that's how you really can find out. How to adjust edges, relax edges, lose them, find them, restate them, uh, all the way through the painting. Mm. And then where you don't want all that rag stuff, then I'm coming in with a full load of what and just letting all of that blend away to nothing. Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah. That was great. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Oh, Don, is your book drawing the female figure in watercolor still available? I think it's the best uh, painting book I've ever seen. Besides figure drawing, uh, it's gorgeous. Every Everybody should have a copy. Well, uh, <laughs> Harry, it's obvious you have good taste, man. <laughs> <laughs> what is it called again? <laughs> it's called you. Interpreting the Figure in Watercolor. And yeah. I have a box of them at my feet down here. It's uh, twenty. Uh, what is, it, babe? It's twenty five dollars plus uh, shipping, 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 yeah. shipping, and handling, and all that. Business. Well, I guess it, we all should buy. Actually, I have that book, but yeah, it's fantastic. So yeah, I've got both of them. How do we buy it? Uh just uh, <laughs> go to my website, website. and uh, there. There's a section. It's a store, isn't it, honey? I can't remember. Yeah, there. Uh, you go to his website, and then um, I go think shopping. I think it's under like sale or shop or yeah. I'm I can't remember even, but um, yeah. So he has books and DVDs, and then you click on the link, and it'll take you to the page that you can see the the book and and. Uh, order it from that so it's all on his website thank you uh, don andrews studio you. right <sighs> it's fun actually i forgot about that lesson that he did i'll have to try that because I. oh it's wonderful yeah it, it's like uh you're out of control the whole time, but it it really things happen better than you would have done uh, on purpose, you know. Yeah, it's uh, the way you did it. It just kind of the the figure, the head just emerged with yeah. glowing colors, glowing. Uh, Thank you. Apes. That, that's See, it's like I didn't mean to do this here, right here, that little drip. <laughs> But it's sort of looking like I, I might be able to use that for a change in the hair. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, and that just, you know, if you if you manipulate it a little bit, uh, then, you know, uh, one yeah. thing leads to the next. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that was fun. Thank you. <sighs> You're saying, Don, that he started out with his figure already drawn, and then from that you did it. You didn't just paint away, or do you That's just? Correct. He he had a drawing, uh, and uh, and he he just started he started painting. He started painting the face right on you know, with a small brush, and gradually he changed brushes depending on if he was in the background or whatever, but. Well. Uh, it was it was one of those aha moments, you know, mm -hmm. but it really made an impression. Did he have more than one book? No, everybody always asked me that. And uh, I don't even really like to recommend his the one book he had uh, because and it's good, but he did that book he was about 40 years old oh and, uh, 
he, 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 what and the book is good, but when I recommend the book to people, people think that that you know that's his work. But he grew. He was one of those that kept pushing himself to find new answers and to experiment. It, that's one of the things he would say to the class: is the fastest way to improvement is by experimenting. And uh, just like what I'm doing right here, right now, I'm learning, you know, uh, a ton of stuff. And uh, and the paintings that he did uh, in the, the last 20 years of his life were just phenomenal paintings. Uh, and uh, and they're not really recorded. Except you can go to his, just type in Robert E. Wood watercolor artist. Uh -huh. uh, Google, Google, and he's got a website that uh, is going to have some of his old stuff and some of his new stuff. You'll be able to see uh, uh, how he evolved. Don, does he still, I mean, do they still have that website up? Oh, yeah. I didn't know I, that. I thought I don't know who is running the thing because every once in a while they'll have a, a new painting in there. Right? Really? They'll take out some and they'll add some. And I don't well, know who. Also, the, excuse me, California watercolor artists or. Yeah. yeah. Excuse yeah. me. <laughs> you will sometimes see his paintings for sale, but I can't remember the name of the the uh, website. Yeah, uh, let me think. <clears throat> hmm. Hey, Don, who is this quote from? I told my class the other day this, and I don't know uh, who originated this, but I heard this. Uh, the day you learn how to paint, the, the day you finally learn how to paint, is the day <laughs> you stop becoming an artist. The day you wow. stop becoming an artist. I've read that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who came, Good. Who is that? I I don't know. Uh, <coughs> anytime I don't know who said something, I just say Frank Webb said it because he said so many <laughs> things. That, you're probably right. right, you know, half the time. Oh, but I thought you invented that. I thought I read that in your book. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you, I, I'm giving you credit for it anyhow. <laughs> you know, Frank well, paint, passed away this past year. Yeah. He did. Yeah. yeah. Last year, two years, whatever. Huh. Yeah. You, He's a guy that doesn't like uh, dry brush either. That's why I mentioned him the other day. Yes. Yeah, he, he said it was the last refuge of a scoundrel. I, I thought that was funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, he is always funny. saying stuff, you know? Yeah. Hmm. He told me once I should take my painting and rip it up and throw it in the trash. And I, I almost cried. Not, oh. because I, not because I was hurt, but because I think that's the best compliment anyone ever gave me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, I don't follow I don't follow why was that the best compliment I'm sorry I'm thinking. well because he would never have said that to a beginner and we had a bunch of beginners in the class we were in France and everybody I didn't I was sketching and never said Derry paint a picture paint no 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 so I finally did one and he looked at it and he goes, you know, you you should just throw this in the trash. In other words, it's not worth. It's not your level. You know, don't don't give me this crap. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, I got yeah, it. He, he was treating me like one of his equals, and I thought, wow, that's uh, that's quite a compliment. That is quite. A compliment. <laughs> that is quite a and other people are going, oh, oh, you poor thing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, just. Uh... Such an intelligent and witty and and oh, uh, good gracious talented man. I smarter uh, than heck. Smarter than heck. The 
And this goes back. I was mentioning a Silomar yesterday. Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah. I taught at a Silomar one year, uh, and Frank was there. And Frank lives in Pittsburgh, and I was living in Mobile or Fairhope, Alabama. And so the director of the workshop, we both had to go, we both had to go to Atlanta to uh catch a plane west to to I forget, I guess it was Monterey that you fly yep. in. And uh so she set it up where Frank and I would be sitting next to each other on the flight. Oh boy. And it's a five-hour flight from Atlanta to Monterey. And I tell you, sitting next to Frank Webb and talking shop and just talking all things, that was the fastest five-hour flight I've ever had in my whole life. It was just, a, I, I would have said, well, let's go back and ride one more time. <laughs> it was wonderful. It wow. just so entertaining. So who was with you at the seal of mine? That was Jade Fawn that ran that, right? Yes. Um, yeah, those, those were amazing. Yeah, he had just passed away when I taught there, so I never met him. Oh. But I saw some of his paintings; they were fabulous. Yeah, he was a great guy. And uh, but I taught uh, Frank and Barbara Nietzsche's and uh, Christopher Schink, uh, and oh uh, gosh, all of those. Old timey big dogs were there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gerald Brommer. Gerald Brommer. Um, oh gosh. I, I, Tom I, Hill. You ever, hey, you ever studied? Yes, it? yes. Tom Hill. Yeah, boy, what he a meticulous did. painter he was, huh? He was very good. Uh, Jane Burnham. Yeah. She was loose. She painted in a hot press and a big spray bottle. Wow, what a trip that yes, was. Yes, I liked her painting so much. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Oh, it's almost class time. Yeah. Oh, y'all. <laughs> I've been having so much fun. I, I, That's uh, a beautiful painting. It looks great. Yeah, it's just very nice. Gradually softening and adjusting and changing and altering. I hope you enjoyed the demo. And thank you for subscribing to our channel. See you soon.